So the fish are bedding really good here right now. They, uh, the full moon is tomorrow. So there are, we should be able to find some big females that are either up on beds or wanting to be on the beds. You know, it's just a great time of year to fish. We got some overcast conditions which are not the greatest for sight fishing or seeing them, but I'm hoping that'll make them a little bit more receptive to biting this frog. What the sun does is it helps you kind of pick apart where the fish are when you're in heavier grass cover like this. They tend to be under you know, more matted stuff, some of the darker stuff, you can almost call your shot a little better. Um, cloudy conditions, they tend to maybe roam a little bit more, which may make them easier to ca catch just casting around. Uh, but it also kind of makes where you say, man, there has to be one there underneath that mat that may not be true. So there's two basic kind of hollow body frogs. One is just the regular walking frog, I guess you would call it. And then you have your popping frog that of course has the popping face on it. Uh, both of them walk the dog pretty well. The popping frog makes a little bit more noise. This bait is a lot more subtle, and of course that does matter sometimes. Sight fishing, typically you'll throw it to bed when you can see a fish on the bed, but um, a lot of times they will come up, especially when you're covering water, I can't see the beds too well when you know where they are. They will come up and hit a frog really well, especially sometimes when they've been pressured. Oh! Quick release. And don't be afraid to cover water with the frog. I mean, long cast, move it quick, let it pause if you see a little hole or something. You can cover water with the frog too. It's uh, a lot more versatile than a lot of people think. I'm moving, it's just, there doesn't seem to be a lot of bigger fish in here and it's just really slimed in. Um, I know this lake pretty good. This is just a really flat bank. Some of the better big fish banks have a little more depth to them. This is just a big flat here and they're all right up on the reed line, so. Go check some other little locales. It's pretty windy, so we're having to get where it's protected. Usually when the reeds, you know, everything's moving, they a lot of times just back out, just out. So I'm trying to get this frog up where they, you know, it's the, it's the spawn. They're either on the beds, they're almost on the beds, they're around the beds, whatever. And uh, man, we're coming to some juice right here. So the cane line's been pretty solid in here. It's broken up, so I'm, I think this is gonna be, the, this ought to be good stuff. That's, uh, you know, I can get through it back to that back stuff back there. It's got blown in uh, mats. That is where the frog shines. I'm just throwing it out there and trying to hit little holes. It's almost like uh, flipping, except you can cover water to the next spot. Like you can almost line up two little good looking little cuts or holes. Or you're looking for holes in these mats too. So I'll twitch it along, you know, and with pauses on top of the mats because they will come through, of course. But when you get to a little hole, you can let it sit there and give it a short little jabs and the frog won't even hardly move. It'll just walk the dog. It'll just twitch sides and sometimes that drives them crazy. When you first come out of, out of some real thick stuff too, that's when a lot of your bites occur because they'll follow it. As soon as it breaks out in the open, I always let it sit there and give it a couple of little short jabs and they'll take it, but you know, right up, right when you first come out of the stuff. So. Hold on to your rod when that happens. Oh, there he is. Damn there, buddy. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Woo! Come on. Big old female couldn't stand that frog coming by. Look at that. Oh. Come here. Yeah. Well, she bit the head of it, got it on the side of her mouth. Crazy. I got her. Oh. Man, that was an awesome strike, wasn't it? <laughs> nice fish. Check that out. There's, it's hard to beat a frog bite around the spawn. Big female sitting there, right conditions. Really heavy cover, they're up underneath it and uh, getting ready to go on beds. They will bite a frog. Okay, I'm coming up to a real nice mat. It looks like the perfect mat. I, there ought to be some fish under it because I can see a, it's got a different kind of hard bottom coming out and I can see underneath the front edge and I can tell it's pretty much open underneath there. So just work it in sections because 
I mean, they might come a long ways to get it, but usually you got to bring it pretty close to over their head. So just kind of maybe every foot or two feet or three feet, something like that. And bring it through where there's a bunch of holes. Just give them the opportunity to be able to find your frog. They got to find it before they can eat it. Bring that one. Come here, buddy. All right, not a big one. The mean one is what you are. <laughs> Even a pound and a half will bite your frog. Nice. Boy, they're pretty, aren't they? Mm -mm. Chunks. So what I'm using is uh, my brand new Ducket Pro Series Signature Series rod. It's a seven foot heavy action rod. Now, uh, the heavy is how strong it is in the backbone. It still has a great soft tip that's not a pull cue. You can work the frog just fine, but I, this heavy cover, especially because we have cane present here, cane is so strong. I'm using my heavy action rod mostly to get them out of this stuff. The Paradigm Reel, this is a 8.3 to 1 retrieve ratio reel. Now, I'm using a really high speed reel because in between casts, I want to get that frog back to this quick so I can make more casts. It's all about speed, how fast you can get it in because a lot of places I'm just working maybe four or five feet out and then it's reeling as fast as you can and pick another little spot to hit. So that's why I'm using a high speed reel. It's got a great drag. Smooth, cast at a mile, has great has magnetic and centrifugal uh, cast control, minimized backlash and I'm using 50 pound straight braid to the frog. And they are biting. I just caught a good one just a minute ago. Missed a couple more, so I figured there ought to be a couple right in here. Hey, over here. There's one. Oh, that was awesome. Right through the mat. Love that frog bite. He came right through this mat. Put the poles down. There's probably a couple more in there. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Nice little chunk. Man. Awesome. Get us another one. See you, buddy. Ooh. Morning time, it just took a while for them to get active and the water temperature is heated up. Uh, it's almost 70 degree water now, so uh, warmed up. The fish know they like the afternoon in the springtime. He sucked it down, didn't he? <laughs> That's cool. Come here, buddy. Where are you? He in there? Yeah. There he is, little bitty guy. Man, I'm using a heavy acting rod. You can drag a whole mat. Look at that. Uh. Like, hey, who turned out the lights? Let's see you, buddy. 